Good evening, church family. Welcome once again to our Holy Week series on responses to the cross of Christ. Today, it is day number seven in the emphasis that we have been making, and we will be looking especially at the determination of women who ministered to Jesus. They actually ministered to him in his life, but it is amazing how they still stood by him even in the hour of his trial, while all the others were running away. In fact, the scripture tells us that the disciples were scattered, but there were those women who stood by Jesus. They looked on even as he was crucified. And the greatest of their act was even to follow Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus when they picked up the body of Jesus for burial only to see where he was buried. What courageous faith these women had. And we pray God will give us his help as Brother Mark will reflect with us on the word we pray that we will be encouraged as well to have courageous faith. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for leading us during this week as you encouraged us not to have conflicted faith, not to even be discouraged by those who come with counter-attacks on our faith, but for us to embrace contrite faith, confident faith, concerned faith, and even today, courageous faith. Courageous faith. So, Father, please help your servant who will bring the word tonight that we will be blessed and encouraged and strengthened to be courageous in our faith. For we pray and thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good evening and welcome to our service this evening. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This evening I come with a difficult message. To those of you who may not be aware, we recently lost our beloved Auntie Angie Goodson. She tragically perished in a car accident along with her mother, Gogo Muzimba. And we as a church are deeply mourning their loss. But even in the midst of our pain, I can feel God is at work to encourage us. You see, Auntie Angie, as she was affectionately known, was a true servant of Jesus Christ. And this past week I've been reflecting on all the testimonies that have been shared. And to me it reflects a true heart of a servant. She may have shied away from the limelight, but her service was felt wherever she went. Whether you're at church in the ladies' ministry, in financially supporting different programs, helping her family, her neighbors, her friends, even her in-laws, everyone testified to her positive influence in their lives. So we as a church have been deeply affected by this sad, sad loss. And it comes at a time when our message for today is entitled Courageous Faith, the women who ministered to Jesus Christ. We have two passages covering the ladies in ministry at the Lord's death in Matthew chapter 27 verse 55 and at his burial in Luke 23, 55 to 56. So we'll read these two passages, we'll reflect, and we'll draw some implications for our lives. 
Why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Dear Lord, we come before you humbly and saddened this, this day. Even as we are grieving, Lord, your word encourages us. Help us to see and understand, to apply your word in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So open your Bible with me to Matthew 27, verse 55. There it says, There were also many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Luke 23, 55 to 56. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb, how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested, according to the commandment. So let's look briefly at their ministry at his death. So the Matthew 27 passage tells us the women were looking. And these were no ordinary women. They had followed him from Galilee, ministering to him. But in this verse, they were looking at the death of their Savior. So try to immerse yourself into that passage. What is going on in their minds? They were not newcomers or new believers. They had followed him from the beginning of his three-year ministry. And that's a long time to follow someone. So I can only imagine the grief, the anguish of seeing someone you believed in, someone you trusted, someone you ministered to, being ill-treated in this way. What was the nature of their ministry? The Greek word that translated ministry here means to serve, wait on, help, attend to, often referring to spiritual and practical ministry, to relieve, assist, or supply with the necessities for life. So it has some financial connotations. So maybe to clarify, let's look at some examples of what their ministry looked like. Let's pick Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. It talks of women who accompanied Jesus. It says they provided for him and his disciples financially. That is, out of their personal means. Again, in Matthew 26, verse 6 to 13, we see a woman who poured an expensive ointment onto Jesus. And of course, the disciples protested, but Jesus defended her actions with a prophetic note that she was anointing his body for burial. So God was working with the women of that time. Another lady we know of who was a sinner wet the Lord's feet with her tears and wiped those tears away with the hair on her head because of her deep sorrow, her regret for her sin. That's Luke 7, 36 to 50. So there are many other examples we can give of women serving, ministering, loving the Lord our God. But here at his death, these same women are simply looking on. Unable to help, unable to serve, their Savior is gone. You see, if you are someone 
who is used to serving, working with your hands, you find it very difficult to sit idle and do nothing. But now these women could only look on, helpless, hopeless. But when Jesus' body was brought down from the cross and carried away, the women found one last thing they could do for their Savior, to honor him. That was to give him his burial rites. Luke 23 tells us that the women who had come with him from Galilee followed and saw the tomb, how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath day they rested according to the commandment. This was the ministry at his burial. So notice with me the verbs or action words in these verses. They followed. They saw the tomb. They saw how the body was laid. They returned back. They prepared spices. And on the Sabbath, they rested. What remarkable women. They were active witnesses and were faithful right to the death. They did not throw up their hands in disbelief and say, ah, all hope is lost. Why bother following him? He's dead. They did not turn back from following the Messiah. They believed. In the midst of that chaos, when people were insulting and ridiculing when he was being beaten and crucified they supported him and the only way they knew how was with their tears earlier in Matthew 23 it's recorded that the women were mourning and lamenting for him and Jesus turned and comforted them now we see they are ready to serve him, even in his death. That, brothers and sisters, is courageous faith. You see, they could have been persecuted for supporting a condemned man, but they boldly took their place alongside him. And indeed, they still believed in him. And we'll see later how God rewarded them for their faith. You see, God made them the first witness of the resurrected Savior. But for today, what does this mean, courageous faith? What do we learn, what do we take home from these women in ministry. Well, to the women here at CBC and those who are watching and serving in different places, I would like to say thank you for the work that you are doing behind the scenes. I know most of the work is not honorable. The chores mundane duties that you are doing and perhaps they are only noticed when they are not done but they are still essential and they are still valuable so we want to say thank you for the work that you do we want to spend a few moments just to honor you for your dedication as we know you are doing it as unto the Lord. Even as we remember Auntie Angie, who served the Lord, she ministered with her time, her energy, and even her finances.
in so many ways. How are you serving the Lord Jesus today, my sister? Do you have a courageous faith that can stand with Jesus, even in the face of ridicule? of persecution. I encourage you, follow the example of these women and have courageous faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, it's difficult when we face tragedy such as this. And even as we reflect on these women who face the tragedy of your death, not knowing what is happening. But they were still bold. They still followed you in the midst of their pain. Help us, Lord, even in our pain, to continue to persevere, to be courageous, and to have faith in you. Guide our hearts and our minds in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother Mark, for helping us reflect on courageous faith. And thank you all for joining us today. Let us meet once again uh, next week. Uh, let us meet once again tomorrow at the same time to conclude our series as we will look at continuing faith, as we will look at continuing faith. But in the meantime, let us receive the benediction. Our benediction for today comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16 and verse 17. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God the Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, may he encourage our hearts and strengthen us in every good word and deed, in the name of Jesus, amen.